Is justice being applied in a fair and even manner inside the democratic alliance? And can the party's disciplinary structures be trusted to dispense justice in an unbiased fashion. Well, today I have a special guest and uh, we take a special focus on what some have called the state of decay in internal democracy inside the DA. The Politburo is now in session. A warm welcome to you. I'm Olim Gambi in the studio to discuss some of the issues plaguing the Democratic Alliance. I'm joined by the party's deputy chairperson of the Federal Council and that's uh, Natasha Mazzoni. But first, let's take a listen to Patricia DeLille's reaction after she won the case against her expulsion from the DA on Wednesday. The Democratic Alliance Federal Legal Commission has been declared invalid and thereby all decisions that they've taken so far invalid, including all of the disciplinary procedures against me. They have to re-elect and reappoint new members to the FLC and also that they did not follow due process. Again, that was my fight all along, that I'm entitled to due process, I'm entitled to fair systems. My fight has been for fairness and justice, and therefore I will continue to fight for fairness and justice that I am entitled to because I fought for the rights that we have in our constitution today. Well, party officials say DeLille may have won the battle in court, but the fight is far from over. The disciplinary processes will continue um, as they were before, and uh, Patricia DeLille will have to answer to those disciplinary charges. Have you decided when that will happen? The FLC is in consultation now. They're busy looking at uh, her points in limine that have been uh, brought up. I may add the Democratic Alliance has not ever brought a point in limine up or brought anything to court. They've all been done by Patricia DeLille herself. We are now considering those points in limine, and as soon as possible, I think it's, it's in everyone's best interest that as soon as possible this matter is put to bed for once and for all. All right, uh, so let's uh, get this discussion on the road. Ms. Mazzoni, thank you very much for coming through. I know you prefer me to call you Natasha. Absolutely, so, thank welcome. you. Welcome. First of all, the DA's Federal Legal Commission declared invalid by the court because it, is, uh, it was found that it's improperly constituted. Which structure then of the party will discipline Patricia Dillon? Well, I think it's important to note that after every Congress of the Democratic Alliance, which we have every three years, our FLC is reconstituted. So in actual fact, it's in the process of being reconstituted as we speak because we had our Congress in April. So after every Congress, it is reconstituted. Our lawyers are busy uh, advising us as to the judgment, and it is our very respectful opinion that there might have been a misunderstanding in the way the DA operates in terms of management and how we put together our FLC panels and establish our FLC panels. So our lawyers are busy looking at that now, and they will be advising us in due course, and we will make, be making the decision from there. What was the motivation to have Musi Maimane as part of uh, the panel of the FLC in the first place? Well, Musi Maimane doesn't form part of the panel of the FLC in actual fact. He, he doesn't sit on panels of the FLC. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a misunderstanding in terms of how FedEx comes together and FedEx makes sure that the FLC is duly constituted. And that's where we think that this misunderstanding has come, around, come in and has arisen. Um, but certainly Musi Maimane does not form part of the FLC. So what was improper then about its constitution? Well, that's exactly what we need to look at very carefully. We need to look and see exactly what the judges found to have been improper. Um, the judgment that we got in court was a summary technical judgment, and the actual judgment itself is very long and it's very, very technical in nature. Now, I'm not a lawyer. Um, and I don't claim to be, and I trust the DA's legal team uh, are now looking at this to make sure that going forward we are 100% on point and that we adhere to every request and every instruction given to us by the court. People who listened to that judgment, people will make up their own opinions. Why should any member of the DA trust the party's internal mechanisms if people listen to what the judges said there, which is to say that that FLC, which essentially operates as a tribunal of sorts for the DA, 
if it was improperly constituted because the impression will be that, oh, so it's okay for the leadership um, to flout the constitution of the party in order to reach particular outcomes. So why should any member of the DA trust in the fairness of uh, the internal mechanisms? So within the Democratic Alliance, we have the federal executive, which is the top structure. Then we have, well, Congress is the highest decision-making body. And when Congress isn't sitting, then federal council is the highest decision-making structure. Mm. And the FLC reports back to federal council. And federal council meets on average once every three to four months. So it meets continuously throughout the year. And you are elected to serve on the federal council, which is the leadership. So I think that our members can have um, and they can take solace in the fact that discussions about FLC matters are always brought to the Federal Council and the Federal Council, which is made up of elective structures from all across the country, are privy to these decisions and a full report is given by the FLC to the Federal Council. Now certainly if there has been an error, um, this error will be rectified. So we are looking very closely at that. And, and like I said, respectfully, we're looking at the fact that there could have been a misunderstanding in the way the structure of our FLC is formulated. Um, and I think that the entire party knows that we have an appeal system. Now, if we were one of those parties that just institutes discipline and that's it, we, that's the final say, we wouldn't have this appeal mechanism that you have in the Democratic Alliance. So if you are concerned about a judgment that the FLC has brought, mm. then you can take it on appeal. And I think that goes a long way in showing that we, we practice what we preach in terms of, A, separating the powers in our party, so our FLC operates as our judiciary, so it, it is very separate to the rest of the party. And also the fact that we have this appeal system, if you are not happy, you have the right to appeal the decision. Patricia DeLaw has asked for her disciplinary inquiry to be conducted publicly. Will you give her that for the sake of the reputation of the party? Look, I'm going to be very honest. Not many corporations, not many companies, in fact, none that I can think of in the recent past, except maybe uh, an ESCOM inquiry, uh, the internal disciplinary, was done publicly because people have the right to privacy. Now, we can't flout these, right, the, these rights because at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility for the actions that we take. This is a point in Limine that has been raised by Patricia DeLille. It's being considered by the FLC. But certainly in discussions that we've had in the Democratic Alliance, we would not have a massive problem with this particular uh, issue being a public issue. What we don't want is we don't want a, a commission by media. We don't want a, a public hearing. In other words, we want the rules to be adhered to. We want processes to be adhered to. So it would all depend on what the word open means. Because if you opened it to the general public, you could literally land up filling an entire stadium, especially now with the interest that it's got. No, just open it up to the media. So opening it up to the media, absolutely, I see no reason why that couldn't be an option. So that is something that the party would genuinely it's certainly, consider? It's certainly genuinely considering that. When all is said and done, would you say that Patricia DeLille has been treated fairly by the DA versus other members who may have had certain transgressions? and how their cases were dealt with. I think you have to look at what the transgressions are. Mm. Now in this particular instance, and we have to understand that this particular court case only revolved around the, the admitting and the utterances of an intention to resign on Eusebius and Kaiser's show. Mm. So it only dealt with section 3.5.1.2 of our constitution. Mm. That was the only transgression this particular court case dealt with. There are many other transgressions that people deal with, and we have to wait for certain processes to happen. Some of them might be within the, the realm of SAPs that are outside the Democratic Alliance, and we have to wait for a SAPs process to be completed. Once that process is completed, then it comes to the Democratic Alliance. So it simply depends on what your transgression is. In this case, it wasn't a transgression against the national law of the country. It was a transgression against the very own constitution of the Democratic Alliance. And what is important to note is, as public representatives, when you're elected to office, you sign a code of conduct. And part of your signing of the code of conduct is that you agree to adhere to certain rules and regulations, which appear in our constitution. And one of them is, if you make a public declaration that you intend to resign, your membership is ceased. So it's something that you voluntarily agree to 
because we're a voluntary organization. All right, let's take a pause there. And uh, after the break, we look at another case of a DA member whose conduct brought the party and its government into disrepute. And we ask whether tough measures have been applied in that particular case as well. You always make me think you're going to be dreadful.